Hello, Sylvie. Hi, Chloe. How are you? Good, and you? I'm fine, thank you. And uh, we are in this beautiful place. So, without further ado, no more surprise. Can you tell us where we are? So, welcome everybody. We are now uh, at the only estate in Bordeaux, actually, which is Chateau Les Carmaux-Brion. Uh, this estate is quite uh, special because mm -hmm. we are a very small estate. There are walls surrounding the estate and uh, we are indeed really close to the city. Uh, people can come here with tram or cycling, mm -hmm. it's very easy. And it's uh, also very charming, as you can see. We have the vines, but we also have four hectares of park. And uh, we are now just facing the old chateau uh, which yes. is really above, like monitoring all the vineyard, uh, always impressive. Yes, it's so beautiful. I mean, it, it looks like a, really like a small castle. Yes. And uh, with this forest and the autumn vibes, it's so nice. I uh, cannot wait to show you more about this winery. Oh, there is a very nice fountain over there. Yes, actually the, the whole estate is quite historical. Um, there has been vines in Bordeaux since uh, the Romans, as you might know. Uh, and here um, we talk of Les Carmaux-Brion since 1584, mm -hmm. really. At that time, Jean de Pontac, who was the lord of Aubryon, yes. gave this part of the estate to the monks of the Carmelite order. So Carme means Carmelite. And uh, from uh, 1584 to uh, the French Revolution, the monks were there. Unfortunately, during the French Revolution, they were kicked out. Yes. <laughs> they had to go. <laughs> and what a then surprise! <laughs> <laughs> the estate was uh, purchased in uh, 1840 by mm -hmm. a family uh, who settled here uh, and who actually stayed uh, until 2010. In 2010, the estate has been sold to a French uh, real estate company, locally based in Bordeaux, called Le Groupe Pichet. And since 2010, uh, few investments were done. Um, and we are going to see that with yes. a new seller. So Sylvie, even if we are located in Bordeaux, mm -hmm. obviously around, in fact, the chateau, we have a vineyard, which is just here. This is Cabernet Sauvignon. Okay. Actually, we produce here only red wine, so okay. red Pessac Léognon. Mm -hmm. uh, Cabernet Sauvignon is very common in Bordeaux, as everyone knows. We also have some Merlot. Mm -hmm. What is less usual is that we have a very high percentage of Cabernet Franc planted okay. here. Mm -hmm. And uh, how many uh, acres do you have in total? Uh... So you might make the translation in uh, acres because yes. I'm not so good. So it's <laughs> six hectares of vines so for we'll say 15 acres. Yes. <laughs> and uh, so that's for the vineyard here. We also okay. have another vineyard which is on the outskirts of uh, Bordeaux, mm -hmm. uh, still in Pessac Léognon, where we have uh, over 30 hectares, mm -hmm. where we produce another wine, uh, okay. still Pessac Léognon and still red. But here for Carmaubryon, here we have six hectares of uh, vines. All right, so uh, 15 acres. And yes. so uh, obviously, as we can see, well, it's autumn time, mm -hmm. so there is no more grapes. Sorry, yes. we have eaten everything. No, we have done the <laughs> harvest. Yeah. So when did you uh, usually do the harvest here? But, um, those uh, recent years have been quite uh, early years, so we've been harvesting quite early in September. Mm -hmm. But uh, this year we went back to rather normal, uh, so mm -hmm. we started harvesting around uh, the 21st of September. So we were talking about a very unique architecture, and believe me, in Bordeaux, Chateau Les Carmes Aubryon is one of kind, really. So uh, Sylvie, behind us, we have, in fact, the cellars. Sure. <laughs> believe us or not, this is the cellar. This is the cellars. <laughs> so it's, it's, um, it's not very traditional. <laughs> not at all. You will see inside also. So it has been designed by Philippe Stark and uh, he worked with an architect from Bordeaux, Luc Arsène Henry, and together they made this building which is actually built on the water. Yes. You mentioned Le Pug uh, earlier on. So the water which is here circulating all around uh, the, the, the yeah, cellar the building. Mm -hmm. uh, is in fact 
part of Le Pug, uh, which will have an effect of cooling the building because there is one level under the water. Okay. So we are underwater. Yes. We are surrounded we are. by uh, a lot of barrels. Uh, so can you tell us a little bit more about like the winemaking process at Chateau Le Carmo Brion? Are you using like uh, only uh, oak barrels or other containers? I don't yes, know. Yes, we are. <laughs> So um, if we start from the top, so uh, mm. grapes arrive uh, from the outside so and pick um, and then will be sorted. Yes. Uh, the selection is very important here because we uh, will vinify partially with okay. whole bunches. Mm -hmm. That means that we will keep the stem, you know, okay. the branch of yes. the bunch. Which normally is not the case no, uh, because in the wineries in Bordeaux. Yeah, when the stem is green, it's not interesting mm. because it gives vegetal taste. Whereas when it's well ripe, so when it has started uh, getting brown, uh, red, it's very interesting. It gives a certain saltiness okay. on the back of the mouth. So we like that. So depending on the year and the ripeness, we keep between 30 to 60% of whole bunches. And okay. then we will make layers uh, for, the, uh, for the alcoholic fermentation. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will just let everything infused inside the vat so that we can really uh, work in infusion, having mm -hmm. all the color, uh, the soft tannins of the skin of the yeah. grapes. And then um, we press, you know, malolactic fermentation and aging. Yes. The aging, exactly, will take place either in barrels, so traditional bottle mm -hmm. barrels, 225 liters, we have some casks uh, coming wow. from Austria okay. where we will work on a reduction. And then we also have amphoras oh, um, yes, on the other see. room. Uh, so these are made of terracotta, mm -hmm. which is quite porous. So yes. we will work rather on oxidation Silicon. to get the silky tannins also mm -hmm. of the vines. And we also have some um, um, containers that okay. are made of sandstone. Okay. So um, these oh. plus the vats also. So we will really try to combine all the complexity of our terroir and uh, try to really reflect all the aromatics mm. of the 16 different soils that mm. we have here. Oh, they're so cute. So we are now in a beautiful salon. Uh, everything was designed by Philip Stark? Yes, almost everything. Almost? Because the carpet was designed by his daughter. Oh, actually. nice. Okay. And we have like a stunning view on the historical chateau, on uh, the park with the vineyard. Uh, it's so beautiful. And so can we do like tasting in the, in the salon? There is one tasting that uh, can be done here. Uh, it's uh, kind of, uh, you know, um, vertical. So okay. um, it's rather a luxury uh, tasting, which we offer. Okay. And so do you have like uh, other uh, tasting that you're proposing? Sure. The winery? We have uh, private tastings uh, okay. that we like uh, to, to present to people. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's done on the other room. Okay. where you will go, Chloe, also. <laughs> and uh, we, so these are uh, just private tours that uh, mm -hmm. we can do it for one or uh, 10 person. Okay. We like, uh, yeah, small groups mm -hmm. and private so that it's really interactive. Mm -hmm. And then we explain everything about the vineyard, the history, uh, the architecture. Mm -hmm. Um, of course, it's vinification, and of course, there is a tasting of ah. our two wines, sure. <laughs> okay, a tasting. Chloe, I guess you want a tasting now. Mm, yes. Okay, <laughs> so um, we are going uh, today to taste the Chateau des Carmobrions 2014, mm -hmm. which is a vintage I really love because it, uh, it's the, the vintage with the highest percentage of Cabernet Franc for the most recent years. This is a blend of 54% Cabernet Franc, oh, wow. 32 Merlot and 14 Cabernet Sauvignon. We can say about this wine is that mm. it's really something very typical from, uh, from Carme, uh, light, fresh, floral, 
24 months of aging in barrels. Yes. We can feel like a slight of uh, oak, but mm -hmm. it's like very delicate, like a lot of vanilla, a little bit of uh, toast indeed. I feel that um, this one will be like marvelous with a lot of different uh, food. Obviously, if I stay very Bordeaux based, I will be like a very nice steak. Or, um, cooked on barbecue, you know, on the salmon, the, the branches of the vines that we cut during winter time. It gives like a little smoky uh, vibe in fact to, uh, uh, to the beef with a very nice uh, salt and also herbs like uh, rosemary. It will be very nice. As far as I'm concerned, I'm a big fan of uh, lamb mm. meat. And uh, so, you know, very, uh, there's something we call Gigo de sept yes. heures mm. uh, in French, which is uh, like basically seven hours cooked, mm. very low temperature. So the meat is, uh, but that's what you said, almost a little uh, caramelized, so toffee, mm. and uh, yeah, it's um, it's delicious. I, I love that, very very soft and uh, nice berry. So Thilvi, thank you very much for welcoming me at uh, Chateau Le Carme Aubryon. Uh, I am sure that uh, you've learned a lot of things about this uh, winery and I can just encourage you to really come and discover. And so we'll give obviously like all the information uh, down sure. below. Mm -hmm. So like this you can contact uh, Sylvie if you want to uh, enjoy a tour and a glass of a delicious uh, Chateau de Carmeau-Briand. Yeah, see you soon at uh, Carmeau-Briand. Thank Cheers. you, Chloe. Bye-bye. <laughs>